systems in 2008. This is the third season for us. Classified as ultralight aircraft, three examples of the fly synthesis Texan 550 top class. Not, you might think, the most auspicious machine in which to perform a closed formation flying display, but nonetheless, they put on a very, very good show. They flew their rehearsal a few days ago in extremely difficult, very, very windy conditions, yet kept, yet kept a, uh, a tight formation, immaculate formation changes, and we look forward to more of the same from them later on. They're on at 13.36 uh, in the uh, programme we have at the moment. Uh, looking to the right, you will see uh, once again the shape of the Boeing C-17A Globemaster III. Coming in for uh, a full stop landing. As Ben said earlier, we uh, didn't get to see his, uh, his full routine, which is, is a shame because yesterday it was brilliant. It was indeed to see such a large aircraft being thrown around almost like a fighter in the uh, Fairford overhead was a, uh, an insp inspiring sight. Uh, what you'll see now, uh, a very unusual um, uh, landing technique in the C-17, probably one of the only aircraft in the exception of the where you actually put power on to land. So for those uh, with uh, good hearing in the crowd, you'll actually hear him as he is touching down, putting power on. That links back into what we were talking about earlier with the uh, deflected jet efflux coming out of those two inboard engines. And effectively, by increasing power right at the last minute, he cushions the, uh, the landing uh, roll out and uh, reduces the rate of the Saab Yas 39 Gripen of the Swedish Air Force. An example on the runway now comes from the third squadron of the F-7 fighter wing at uh, Sotenas in South Central Sweden, flown for us this year by uh, Captain Anders Björk. Anders has about 500... So here we go, the 2010 display of the Swedish Air Force Saab Yas-39 Gripen.
prototype the diminutive J29 of Tunan, the flying barrel. The Gripen was intended as a replacement both for the Draken and the Vigan, and it was developed from the outset as a multi-role type able to perform the air-to-air, air-to-ground, recce and anti-shipping missions. It was also intended to have a very high degree of operational flexibility, just like its illustrious predecessors, with ease of maintenance and extreme weather conditions and the short field capabilities to the fore. Here's the uh, high alpha pass. Indeed, if you uh, saw how the guy got into this manoeuvre, he uh, barrel rolled into downwind and used that manoeuvre to spill all the speed and energy from the aircraft prior to then uh, turning and uh, bringing the aircraft into the high alpha position. Base for this sort of display, though, would have been 700 feet, so uh, you can imagine how hard that would have been with another 300 foot less. He's just uh, bled all that speed off, configured the aircraft with the uh, undercarriage down and uh, flaps are lowered, and has been given permission to land on runway 27. That was uh, Captain Anders Björk in the Swedish Air Force Yas 39 Gripen. Another impressive fast jet display at Riyadh 2010 on the Sunday, our last day of the It's like anything else, you know, it's what we do, it's what we're trained to do, um, and it's, it's our day to day job that we do in our airports across the country. The district's written well, and it's up to us to keep it running, and then a very different one on Monday morning is when everybody wants to go home at the same time. Now, you've been doing this for almost 22 years? Yeah, it's the 22nd show, uh, started in uh, 89, did some shows in Moscow, and at Cottesmore, we went to Cottesmore as well. I think the Saturday and Sunday when the, when the display is running well, it's running time, uh, and seeing the new aeroplanes this year, like the Raptor, is great fun. Uh, and, and the new Airbus. Um, and if, if things are, are running late and we can't, we can't bring it forward and, and we don't, don't compromise safety and we'll just run a little bit late. Um, it, there is a bit of an art to it, uh, of actually getting things on the runway quickly, getting them off the runway quickly and, and shipping the pilots along. But as I say, safety is the, the first priority. If you had a message to those who visited Riyadh, what would it be? Let's have a great time and, uh, and uh, look forward to uh, seeing, seeing the, uh, the aircraft that you don't see anywhere else. And, and this is just this is the airshow of Riyadh. Well, Smith, you saw the uh, range over there on the runway. What are they looking for in a runway inspection? Well, it's quite simple. There are, there are a number of things. Obviously, it's a, it's a critical piece of the airfield. Let's uh, let's be honest about it. It is it is probably the most important piece of the airfield from a uh, pilot's point of view. So uh, we've seen already uh, some uh, gliding at the beginning of the day, which took place. So uh, when that was being lined up, the uh, tug aircraft would have had the cable out, uh, which may well have uh, scraped or damaged the runway. The aircraft operations themselves can have an effect on potentially loose pieces of tarmac. So a quick inspection to check that nothing is coming up. Uh, but predominantly on a day like this, with so many people in the crowd, it will be uh, umbrellas, hats, uh, money from patrons' pavilion that may have blown across the runway, and uh, bits of um, uh, uh, foreign object damage, 
uh, that uh, with a crowd such as this trying to control all the things that could potentially blow across there. So a quick inspection every now and then just serves to give that uh, reassurance to all the aircrew that they're going to be operating from a very safe, clean and well-prepared runway.